Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Anime Theory, the king of making attack pieces against anime characters I guess. So this week I think it's finally time to talk about the subject that I've been asked to talk about time and time again. Let's talk about Nier. Nier is single-handedly one of the most divisive characters in all of anime. I've never seen an audience so split down the middle on someone. You either despise Nier and what he brought to the show or you adore his antics and the character himself. The reason why the character has become this divisive is all due to the fact that Nier has a problem. Or should I say that Nier has many problems. I think that, considering the amount of requests I've had to cover this subject, it's about time I really gave a look at Nier in depth and try to showcase what happened with Nier, why it all turned out this way. Before all the Nier fangirls go off on me, I'd like to say that I don't hate Nier. He's alright, I just think there's a number of problems surrounding the character himself. Now without further ado, let's dig into this problem. Now, when analyzing Nier, it's always important to address the L event in the room. You know, L. No matter which way you spin it, Nier is made out to be a carbon copy of L himself in quite a number of ways. This isn't a baseless accusation either. The orphanage he was raised in, being Whammy House, was literally training Nier to be just like L, in terms of intellect at least. So even in universe, Nier is a copycat of L. And it's this exact problem that pretty much destroys any chance Nier had of being well-liked, by the majority of Death Note fans at least. I'm not joking, L himself is integrated into every single problem the fandom has with him. Let's really take a look. First to start with, Nier is often described as a lesser L in pretty much every way, be it behavior, general intellect, and what on the surface seems to be a lack of personality. Most people seem to think that he was a poor rival for Kira, and I think there's a lot of easy examples as to why this is the case. Personality-wise, well, he's barely shown to have any. Nier is basically only present in 10 episodes, ever being real, and even then, it's only for the briefest amount of time. In some episodes, Nier only appears for a total of a minute, and we really don't get to see much of him. Most of the things he's seen doing is building bizarre structures with dice or playing with weird dolls, and that's really it. That's all we get from him most of the time, as the anime tries to portray him as this dry person with no emotions the majority of the time. Speaking on Nier's intellect as well, it's pretty easy to see why people tend to think that Nier isn't nearly as smart as L. All of Nier's discoveries early on are essentially the same ones L had, but the difference here is how he came to these realizations. With L, we see his thought process, we see him contemplating over many theories and possibilities. The viewer gets a much better grasp of just how smart L is, but we also see that L isn't just fed the answers outright. He's tricked on occasion, he has the wrong train of thought on occasion, and he even makes mistakes. This humanizes him. Nier, however, has none of this. He pretty much comes up with everything immediately and always seems to know the answers to everything. We don't really get to see his thought process, and we don't get to really see him working over the problems. He just thinks for a second and brain blast he's got the answer. It honestly feels like lazy writing, like the writer just wanted Nier to seem smart but had no real way of portraying that. Another issue is that Nier isn't supposed to be considered alone. Instead, him and Mello are supposed to be a duo. They together are supposed to be the rival to take down Kira. Taking this approach was problematic to begin with, however. This essentially meant that both Nier and Mello were supposed to be as good as L together, meaning that alone they would normally only match half that. Even worse is that this means that they both take up screen time when it's clear that either one needed way more time to really showcase their interesting traits. Even worse is that Mello is flat out ignored for most of the show, meaning these two halves feel more like a half and a quarter. If the rival was either just Mello or just Nier, perhaps they could have gotten more time to develop and thus would have been more interesting to the majority of watchers. It's that rivalry point that might be the most damning, however. Throughout the first two thirds of the show, both L and Light are shown to be on par with each other. The rivalry is what made the show and kept the plot so interesting. We spend ample time with both Light and L, and thus both get time to develop. We see their thought process, we see their personality, and we get an understanding of what makes them tick. This way, the two characters are both interesting to follow. When L is phased out, however, now we're facing a completely different dilemma. What made the show was their interactions. Changing out half the rivalry means that not only do we need someone on par with L to be able to match the previous rivalry, but we need someone who produces interesting interactions. Nier and Mello don't work for this, however. Nier and Light barely even interact, and even then, most of the time it's through computers. When they finally do meet up in person, the show is over, and honestly, their interactions weren't even that interesting. By this point, Light has gone completely insane, and Nier fails to really say much of interest to Light. 
it's all just kind of bland exposition. We don't get any of the fun interactions like we did with L. No tennis matches, no sudden fighting while in handcuffs, no bizarre jokes, none of that. It just takes a lot of the fun out of the rivalry. It also doesn't help that Nier's personality is very dry to begin with, meaning that very little of interest could have even come from him to begin with. The final reason as to why Nier is so disliked has to do with the ending. A lot of people tend to oversimplify it to, oh, people don't like it because Nier won. While the problem might stem from Nier winning, that's not the full story. You have to remember that up to this point, Nier really does just feel like a lesser version of L in pretty much every single way, intellect included. Considering that most of Nier's conclusions feel like the result of lazy writing, it's no shocker that the victory feels less earned. He didn't really solve the mystery himself slowly over time like L did, he was just kinda handed the answers, and thus, the victory. Light himself was also not exactly at his highest point either, but at this point Light was so overconfident that it didn't feel like an epic victory after a hard fought battle of the minds. It felt like one guy was handed the test answers while another guy was so confident he passed that he didn't study. And considering the lack of personality, the lack of screen time, and the lack of time to get attached to Nier, it's no surprise that people would be a bit miffed about his victory. Nier was given a sad fate. He comes after one of the most interesting characters in all of anime, one that made for an interesting foil to the main character and helped make the show what it was. Nier, however, was not given even close to the same deal. He was given virtually no screen time, and what little of it he got seems like he was just BSing the answers out of thin air. We get to see virtually none of his personality, and he makes up only half of the rivalry that not only seems to be missing the other half, but also has an opponent that is severely worsened from how he was at the beginning of the show. He claimed a victory that some would say he didn't deserve, and all the while was created so similar to L that no matter what he did, he would always be compared. If Nier had been the only rival, and had the writers taken a different direction with him, perhaps making him quirky and crazy instead of dull and emotionless, perhaps he could have stood on his own. Instead, he's forced to be compared to his older brother that will always be more loved than him. It really is a sad fate, but it's one that Nier is forced to bear. Because the biggest problem with Nier is that he had a predecessor that was better in pretty much every other way. Uh, hey, just a quick update. I'm gonna stop doing Death Note videos for a bit. Sorry, but I have gotten a little tired of making so many. I want to take a short break before I finish off the last two videos of Death Note Month. I apologize if you were really looking forward to the last two ones, especially since they were really crazy, but I, I just need a break. I'm going a little nuts here. So we're gonna have a couple videos at bare minimum of other anime before I come back to Death Note. But I also want to make sure when I do come back the videos are really good, so hopefully they're of high enough quality to be worth the wait. Anyways, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.